You know what time it is. Get into it, babe. Get into it. Yes. Welcome back to another installment of Storytime with Chris. As I always say, you don't have to watch these videos when they go live. You're more than welcome to watch them in your downtime, nap time, max and chillaxing time, study time, break time, work time, in meantime, in between time, scheming time, CP time, any time that you want to hear a highly animated voice bringing wonderful stories of magic, fantasy, science fiction, adventure, and many, many more in between. So, we are back. And y'all, let me just say, we are about to enter chapter 12 and... I think we only have... Yeah, there's only 21 chapters. So we're at a good pacing right now. We're doing pretty good in my opinion. Okay, yep. So, last time we were here... Taran had defeated the evil wizard Morda and was able to return the jewel that belonged to the fair folk back to Doli who is a dwarf that's been traveling with them on numerous adventures. So he's returned to the Fair Folk's realm to King Idaleg. And now Fluter, Gurgi, and Tarn have found themselves heading north into the mountains and have happened upon a mercenary band. What's a mercenary? A mercenary is an individual who does militaristic work or hired work for a price. So, an example of that, a mercenary. Hmm. Let's see. It's kind of like... Hmm. I'm trying to give a pop culture example, so bear with me for a second. Uh... No, that's not a good one. Hmm. When in doubt, look to the books. So, an example of a mercenary. Oh! Okay, for my kids that watch anime, if you've ever heard of the series One Piece, if not, you should go read it or watch it. It's amazing. And definitely check out the live action One Piece on Netflix. No, I'm not being paid to say this. I just think it's really good because I've seen it. Um, but the character Raronia Zoro, he is a bounty hunter. So that is an example of a mercenary. They carry out a job and are paid for what they do. That is an example of a mercenary. But with Lord Dorath's troop, they're pretty much kind of like a wandering barbarian group that are paid to fight wars or take down monarchs or fight another kingdom. It all depends on what you pay them to do. Now, without further ado, let's see what happens when Tarin tries to escape Lord Dorath's company. Chapter 12, The Wager. <clears throat> what are you so impatient to be gone, Lord Swineherd? said Dorath, an edge of mockery in his tone. The dagger twirled in his hands, and he clicked his tongue against his teeth. Without a farewell? Without a word of thanks? He shook his head. This is grave discourtesy to me and to my men. Their feelings are tender. I fear you've deeply wounded them. The men of Dorath's company had begun to stir. In a moment of panic, Tarrant glanced at Fluter and Gurgi. Gloff had climbed to his feet and held his sword lightly, almost carelessly. Tarrant knew the man could bring up the blade in a flash before his own weapon left its sheath. Tarrant's eyes darted to the horse lines. Another of Dorath's band had drifted close by the steeds where he stood idly paring his nails with the point of a hunting knife. Tarrant gestured for the companies to make companions to make no move. Dorath straightened. His eyes were cold. Truly, do you mean to part with us? Even warned of the dangers in the hills, he shrugged. Never say Dorath's forces hospitality on unwilling guests. Go, if that's in your head. Seek your treasure and a speedy journey to you. We meant you no discourtesy, Taran answered. Bear us no ill will, for we bear you none. Farewell to you and your company. Much relieved, he beckoned Gurgi and the bard and turned away. Dorath's hand gripped his shoulder. How then, Dorath cried, will you go your way without settling the small matter between us? Tarn halted, surprised, as Tor Dorath went on. 
Why, there is payment to be recognized, Lord Swineherd. Will you cheat me of my fee? We are poor men, Lord. Too poor to give where we do not receive. The warriors laughed harshly. Dorat's heavy face had twisted into a leering humility, which Tarn found all the more fearsome by its false... falsicity. Falsity, excuse me. The man cried out in an accusing, begging tone, You have eaten our meat and drunk our wine all night. You slept safely under our protection. Is this worth nothing to you? Give him the puppy dog eyes. <laughs> Tarin stared at him in astonishment and sudden alarm. Dorath's men had come to gather near their leader. Gurgi edged closer to Tarin. Protection, Fluter muttered under his breath. Who'll protect us from Dorath? Protection! Great Beeler, and I'd call it robbery! And there is more, Lord Swineherd, Dorath quickly continued. The matter of payment for guiding you to the Lake of Lunette. It is no light journey for my company. The paths are long and harsh. Tarin faced the man squarely. You have given us food, drink, and shelter, he said, his thoughts racing to seek escape from Dorath's trap. We will pay their worth. As for your protection on our journey, we neither asked it nor want it. The men are willing, waiting, and ready to guide you, replied Dorath. It is you who breaks the bargain. I struck no bargain with you, Dorath, Tarn answered. Dorath's eyes narrowed. Did you not? But you will keep it nonetheless. The two watched each other in silence for a moment. The warrior stirred restlessly. From Dorath's expression, Tarn could not judge whether the man indeed meant to risk battle. If he did, Tarn realized coldly the companions had little chance to escape unharmed. <clears throat> At last, he said, What do you want from us? Dorath grinned. Now you speak wisely. Small scores are quickly settled. We are humbled men, lord. We ask little, far less than what our fee should be. But for the sake of the friendship between us, Dorath will be generous. What shall you give me? His eyes went to Tarn's belt. You carry a fair blade, he said. It will be mine. Tarn's hands clenched to the pummel. That shall you not have, he asked, answered quickly. I offer you bridles and harness from our gear, and even these we can ill afford. Dalbin, my master, gave me this blade, the first that was truly mine and the first of my manhood. The one I love girded it on me with her own hands. No, Dorath, I do not bargain with my sword. Dorath threw back his head and laughed. Ha ha ha! You make me a do for a piece of iron! Your sweetling girded it to your side, your first blade! Ha ha ha! This adds no worth, it is a fair weapon no more. I've cast away better than that, but the look of this one suits me well enough. Give it into my hand and we are quit. Dorat's face filled with cruel pleasure as he reached out. Sudden anger goaded Tarin, caution forgotten. He snatched the blade from its sheath and drew back an pace. Have a care, Dorath, Tarin cried. Will you take my blade? It will be a costly bargain. You may not live to claim it. Nor you to keep it, Dorath answered, undisturbed. We know each other's thoughts, swineherd. Am I fool enough to risk lives for a trinket? Are you fool enough to stop me? We can learn this easily, Dorath added, to your grief or to mine. Will you try me? My company against yours. When Tarin did not answer, Dorath continued, My trade is to spill another's blood, not waste my own, and here the matter is easily settled. Pit one of your number against one of mine, a friendly wager, swineherd. Do you dare? The stakes? Your sword. Gloff had been listening all this while. His villainous face lit up and he struck his hands together. Well spoken, Dorath. We'll see sport after all. The choice is yours, swineherd, Dorath said to Tarn. Who is your champion? Will that hairy brute you call comrade stand against Gloff? They're both ill-favored enough to be well-matched. Or the harper. The matter is between you and me, Dorath, Tarn replied, and none other. All the better. Torath answered. Do you take the wager, then? We two unarmed, win or lose, the score paid. You have Dorath's word. Is your word as true as your claim? Tarin flung back. I trust no bargain with you. Dorath shrugged. My men will withdraw beyond the trees where there will be no help to me, if that's what you fear, and so will yours. What say you now? Yes or no?
No, no, shouted Gurgi. Kindly, master, beware. Taran looked long at the sword. The blade was plain, the hilt and pummel unadorned, yet even Dorath had seen the craftsmanship in its making. The day Dalman had put it in his hands shone bright in Taran's memory as the untarnished metal itself, and Ailanwi, her tart words had not hidden her blush of pride, still treasure it though he did, he forced himself to see the blade coldly, as indeed no more than a strip of metal. Doubt rose in his heart. Win or lose, he felt unsure whether Dorath would let the companions free without a pitched battle. He nodded curtly. So be it. Dorath signaled to his band, and Tarn watched cautiously until all had made their way a good distance into the woods. At Tarn's orders, Fluter and Gurgi untethered Lion and the two steeds and reluctantly withdrew in the opposite direction. Taran flung down his cloak and dropped Ilanwi's horn beside it. Dorath waited, a crafty glint in his eyes, as Taran slowly ungirded the scabbard and thrust the sword into the ground. The tar Taran stepped back. In the instant, Dorath sprang upon him without warning. The force of the burly warrior's charge drove the breath from Taran's lungs and nearly felled him. Dorath grappled with him, and Taran realized the man strove to seize him by the belt and hurl him to earth. Taran flung up his arms and slipped downward out of Dorath's clutches. Cursing, Dorath struck at him with a hard fist, and though Taran escaped the full weight of the blow, it glanced painfully from the side of his head. Ears ringing, Taran sought to disengage himself and regain sure footing, but Dorath pressed his attack without respite. He dared not, Taran understood, let his heavier opponent come to grips with him, for Dorath's powerful arms could snap him in two, as the warrior plunged once more against him. Taran snatched the man's forearm, and with all his strength swung Dorath head over heels to send him crashing to the ground. But Dorath was on his feet in a flash. Taran crouched to meet the warrior's new attack. For all his weight, Dorath moved quick as a cat. He dropped to one side, spun quickly, and suddenly... Taran saw the man's thick fingers gouging at his eyes. As Taran struggled to escape the blinding thrust, Dorath seized him by the hair and wrenched his head backward. The warrior's fist was raised to strike. Taran, gasping at the painful shock, flailed at the man's grinning face. Dorath's hole loosened. Taran tore himself away. For an instant, Dorath seemed bewildered by the rain of blows, and Taran pressed his slight advantage, darting from one side to the other, giving Dorath no chance to gain the upper hand again. Dorath dropped suddenly to one knee and caught at Tarn with an outflung arm. Striving to tear himself away, Tarn felt a sharp, stinging blow to his side. He fell backward, clutching at the hurt. Dorath rose up. He gripped a short, bladed knife drawn from his boot. Disarm! Tarn cried. We fight weaponless! You betray me, Dorath! The warrior looked down at himself. Have you learned which of us is the fool, Lord Swineheart? Ilanwi's horn lay within Tarn's grasp, and his fingers reached for it. How long, he thought hurriedly, how long before the fair folk might answer his call? Could he hope to keep Dorath at bay, or at the last, could he do no more than turn and flee? He yearned desperately to sound the notes, but with an angry shout he cast aside the battle horn, snatched up his cloak for a shield, and plunged straight against Dorath. The warrior's knife tangled in the folds of the garment, gaining strength from his anger. Tarin ripped the blade from the hand of Dorath, who staggered under the flurry of the onslaught, and fell to the ground. Tarin followed him, seized Dorath by the shoulders, and braced his knee against the warrior's throat. Cut throat! Tarn shouted through clenched teeth, You'd have taken my life for the sake of a piece of iron? Dorat's fingers scrambled in the earth. His arms shot up. A handful of dirt and stones pelted against Tarn's face. Find me now, cried Dorath with a mighty heave. Tarn clapped his hands to his smarting eyes. Tears streamed down his face, and he groped for the warrior who sprang away in an instant. Tarn stumbled forward on hands and knees. Dorat's heavy boot drove into his ribs. Tarn cried out, then fell, doubled up and panting. He strove to rise, but even the strength of his anger could not bring him to his feet. He sank down, his face pressed against the earth. Dorat strode to the sword and plucked it from the turf. He turned to Tarn. I spared your life, swineherd, he cried scornfully. It means not to me. I have no wish for it. Swood we meet again, it might not go as well for you. Tarn raised his head. In Dorat's eyes, he saw only cold hatred that seemed to reach out to blight or shatter all it touched. You have won nothing, Tarn whispered. What have you gained worth more to you than to me? The getting pleased me, swineherd. The taking pleases me all the more. Dorath tossed the sword in the air, caught it again, then threw back his head and burst into raw laughter. He turned on his heel and strode into the forest.
Eva with his strength had come back and the pain in his side had dwindled to a dull ache. Taran saw a long, sat a long while on the ground before gathering up his belongings, the torn cloak, the battle horn, the empty scabbard, and setting off to join Fluter and Gurgi. Dorath had gone. There was no sign of him, but the laughter still rang in Taran's ears. And that is where we will end for today. Let's talk real quick. So that is a primary example of somebody not being honest, not playing fair, not being truthful, and lacking all type of honor. Kids, I do not condone violence in any type of way. I want to make that very, very clear. But when it comes to sportsmanship, when it comes to engaging in a physical activity, whether it's sparring with someone, whether it's wrestling, whether it's football, whether it's soccer or to the world, football, uh, whether it's baseball, basketball, softball, gymnastics, cheerleading, volleyball, fencing, archery, kendo, Rhythmic gymnastics, skateboarding, snowboarding, ice skating, any sport or athletic event or martial art you can think of, always lead with honor. Don't try to cheat and don't be sneaky about it because I'm going to tell you something. Even though Dorath cheated to win, people like that never really prosper. Just keep that in mind. And we'll see what happens next we meet. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.